Hi everybody, I'm Dave Thomas and today I am building the Starship Octavius model rocket from Estes. Now this is a snap together rocket so you don't even need any glue for it and because of that it's good for younger children or just times when you need a really quick rocket to build. I will also show you though how to glue this together if you want a more per permanent application. So first I'm going to go ahead and just open this up so we can check out the parts here. Alright, so find the instructions. Alright, and then we'll just go through here and make sure we have everything. Alright, so we have the nose cone here, pre colored body tube, some self adhesive decals. All right, and then we've got this small parts package. This includes the fins, the fin can, motor retainer, shock cord, shock cord mount, and the parachute. All right, and let's see. Make sure we have all the fins in there too. Okay, yep, got everything there. All right, so everything's in the package. I'm going to clear most of this away, and when I come back, we'll start building. We start off with the fin can here, and this was in that smaller parts package. And here we just need to line up all the little pegs here with all the little holes. And we should have the smooth shoulder in the front and the threaded part in the rear. So that's just going to pop together here. Right, try to get that in as tight as you can. Alright, and then we put the fins in. So we've got one silver fin and then two black ones here. Um, and they are different shapes. It's supposed to be that way. Okay. So it's not telling us that we need any particular um, slot here. So I'm going to put the uh, silver fin, the odd colored one here, in the slot that's opposite of the launch lugs on the fin can. Okay, so that just pops into the big holes and you shove that forward. And then for the other two fins we'll do the same thing. Okay, make sure everything is snug in there. Okay, so at this point it all looks like this. And then we're going to add the motor retainer here. And that just screws on the back. Next we're going to insert the fin can into the body tube. Okay, so on this body tube um, there are two holes. There's a big hole up here on the forward end and a smaller one on the aft end. That's the one we want. And so this little tab here on the shoulder of the fin can is going to lock into these two holes. So there's a tab there and a tab there. All right, and two holes down here. Either one works. So we're just going to push that in and then that's going to lock in place. All right, and it will have a little bit of a give there, but that won't affect it in flight. Okay, and then we need to do shock cord mount. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole model. Okay, it comes in two pieces. So the rounded piece here is going to go in that forward hole. Okay, so it just goes through the square hole and the rounded part should face forward like that. Okay, and then this part Notice it's got a little bit of roundedness to it. This is going to go inside the tube and the rounded side is up against the tube. These two little prongs are going to go around this little flange here on the inside. So this will be on the inside of the rocket, but it's going to look like that. Right, so I'll pull that back off, put this back in. 
Okay, and now I'm just going to slide this. I don't have a way to show this on the video. And you kind of got to feel it in there. Let's see if we can get a look. Um, not really. There we go. You heard that click that way. That was okay. But that should be on there like that. And now we're going to take the shock cord and on one end tie a double knot. Okay, get that nice and tight there. And then you're going to cut off the free end, but not all the way up to the knot. You leave just a little bit there, because we don't want it to pull through. Okay, and now we're going to take the other side here, and we're going to notice that there's a little slot on that curve piece. So we just push this through there, and that's going to put it into the body tube and just kind of thread it in. All right, and then when it gets in far enough, you can just pull that through. Okay, until it reaches the knot there, and that should stop. All right, so if you got this knotted correctly and, and cut off enough there, nothing should be sticking out of the back side of that mount. The next step is to attach the parachute to the nose cone. So here I'm just going to open up the parachute package. All right, so just go ahead and open that fully up. Okay, and then find all the shroud lines. So in most Estes parachutes, I'll have one shroud line that goes all the way across the parachute and then one on each side. And so the first thing to do is just gather these up on one finger. Okay, I'm going to move fingers here. And then on the other end, I'm going to gather up right at the center here. I'm going to pinch that between my fingers. Okay, and then when I pull this taut, all of the corners should be pretty much at the same level there. All right. If they're not, you can kind of twist a little bit, let some of the loop go, or the one side or the other there, until they do get into an even spot. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer you get it, the better flight you're going to have, uh, or better recovery, I should say. All right, now I'm going to take my loops here, like this. Now, according to the instructions, they're going to tie this directly onto the nose cone. All right, so you just take your loops, you pass that through the nose cone, like this, and try to keep it tight back in here so they don't change their relative lengths. And then you can either slide the entire parachute through this loop, or you can slide the entire nose cone through the loop. Either one is going to give you the same thing. This, this will then tighten down into a knot as we pull this tight. Now the reason I'm not pulling it tight, and you'll have seen this in my other videos, if you've seen my other videos, is that I don't like to permanently attach parachutes. Okay, so I'm going to take mine back off again. And I'm going to use a little snap swivel here. And you can get these in the fishing part of any department store or sporting goods store. They come in lots of different shapes and sizes. Um, the main thing you need to worry about is making sure that the snap part is large enough to fit the nose count. So that has to fit over that eyelet there. Okay? These rockets are light enough that the actual strength of the snap swivel um, doesn't matter at all. Okay? Even the smallest ones are more than robust enough to handle the weight of the rocket. But you just need to make sure that the snap will fit over without binding. All right, so once again, I'm going to refine my position here, make my loops. Okay, pull that out, but I'm going to keep the loops now smaller 
is I'm going to pass them into the little eyelet here of the swivel side of the snap swivel. Okay, I'm going to pass all of those through and then reform my loops, make sure they're straight. Okay, and now I'm going to pass the entire snap swivel through those loops, pull them downward, and then pull that into a knot right there. Okay, so that's, you will have to buy this extra if you want to do this. Um, again, you don't need to to fly the rocket, you can just permanently mount there. Uh, and then the other thing I would suggest, if you're going to use this method, is apply just a little touch of either wood glue or white glue to that knot. Just a little tiny bit. And I'm just going to work that in a little bit. And this will just help keep that from coming loose and giving you uneven shroud lines again. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside for just a moment. Alright, um, one other thing here, this kit is meant to be ready to fly as soon as you assemble it. It's all pre-colored and everything. If you do decide you want to paint the nose cone, I would suggest using some very fine sandpaper, uh, anywhere from about 220 to 400 grit, and sand down the seams that occur here. These are just an, an artifact of the molding process. Um, and then just sand the whole thing lightly. And the reason for doing that is it just helps the paint adhere to the plastic better. All right. If you're just going to go with the, the rocket as it is, build it quickly and launch it, don't worry about doing anything to the nose. All right, now we're ready to attach the shock cord to the nose cone. And you want to do this after you've tied the parachute on. It just makes it easier that way. All right, and once again, we're just going to double knot this or put in two half hitches if you're a Boy Scout or other naughty person. All right, and then I'm going to pull on this from both directions here and then both directions at once to get that good and tight and cinched down. All right, and now here I want to be really careful. I don't want this to get caught up between the shoulder of the nose cone and the body tooth. So I'm going to cut this off to about a quarter inch or about six millimeters here. Okay, you don't want it right at the knot because then it might pull through, but just a little bit there. And just like I did with the, the parachute knot, I like to add just a little bit here of glue just to help keep that knot from slipping loose. All right, and then I can go ahead and attach my parachute. All right, so structurally, it looks like that. Oops. Structurally, everything's together here. Um, and now what we have to do to prepare it for launch is put this all together. Now, I'm not going to launch this right away, uh, but to put everything together, simply take your parachute here, all right, and then take all of your shroud lines, find about the midpoint, and pull that up into the parachute. And then just fold the edges over, giving you a nice long spike. And then I like to fold that down once, and then fold the edges over again. That gives me a nice narrow parachute pack. All right, and then we'll just take all the shock cord here, shove that down inside. Now if we were preparing this for launch, we would first put in uh, about three squares of recovery wadding into this. All right, but I'm just putting it away for storage. All right, and then put the parachute in. And then any leftover shock cord can go in on top of it. All right, and here the main thing is, once more, um, make sure that there's nothing getting in between the inside here of the uh, body tube and the shoulder of the nose cone. So that should all go together. Oops, I just saw. All right, you see that little piece sticking out there? that is going to potentially prevent the nose cone from popping during ejection. So I'm just going to shave off that little bit with a hobby knife All right, and put that back in. Okay, And then I'm going to align this with the uh, silver there. 
Okay, so that's what it should look like all together. And now we just need to put the decals on. Now, before I put the decals on, I do want to show you um, what we can do if you want to make this permanent. Okay, now if you want to have this uh, more permanently fixed together, um, you can do it after you've all uh, assembled it here, or you can do this as you assemble it. So I'm going to come back and gently pull this apart. Okay, and you can kind of push in on those tabs with a fingernail if you need to. All right, just be gentle about it, so we don't want to rip it. Okay, so the first thing we can do is put a bead either of tube type model cement in there um, or gel type super glue. Alright, so on mine I'm going to use the gel super glue and I'm going to put this in a bead right inside. Mainly you just want something that's thick enough that it won't just get absorbed by the cardboard. This needs to remain in place to form a bond between the cardboard and the, the plastic of the fin can here. All right, so now I just need to make sure I get this back the way I had it. All right, and just push that forward again. Okay, and in this case, go ahead and push it all the way up um, as much as you can to make it flush. Alright, now for the fin can itself, um, if you were doing this from the very beginning, then I would say use some of the tube type cement and basically go through and put a little cement on each of the holes in each of the pegs and then when you put it together, those would be cemented together. If you're doing it after assembly, um, you could take the whole thing apart and uh, do it that way, but here, I'm just going to now use some brush-on plastic cement. Um, you can use the, the very runny super glue to do this too. Um, so I've just added a paper towel here. And what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to look in the engine mount itself and we've got these two seams and I'm going to put some of this on from behind. and just let it work itself into the seam there. And you want to make sure those seams are close together. So if you can see a really big air gap in there, then you're going to have to hold this together. All right, but mine looks pretty good. Don't put the retaining ring back on though until that has dried. All right, now for the fins, I'm just going to run this right along the sides and let some capillary action absorb that down into the seam. And you can see it just kind of runs right along there. All right, and once that dries, the, the uh, solvent of the cement there will not be so noticeable. Now it is possible to glue the fins on from the start when you're putting it together. Uh, and if you've seen some of my other videos that include plastic fins like this, I've done that in them. What often happens though is sometimes you get your glue in there and you go to put the fin on and it binds about halfway up and it just will not go any farther. And so this method is a little bit less strong but it gives you a lot more control over the placement of the fins. Okay, so that's all we need there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of wood glue or white glue up inside that shock cord mount. All right, and you don't need a lot, just a little drop inside there. Oops, there we go. That's a big drop. All right. And theoretically, you could just fill the whole thing up. Really, what I'm trying to do here is just 
pack it in so it doesn't come loose there. And that's more than enough glue on that. All right, go ahead and let this dry for a little bit, and then we'll come back and put on the decals. Now that the glue is dried, I'm going to put the motor retainer back on here. And now we can place the decals. Okay, so these are optional. The rocket will fly just fine without them. All right, but if you want to uh, use the same pattern that we use on the packaging, you can do that. Uh, you can certainly put some other pattern of your own on there. You don't have to go with what's on uh, the package there. All right, um, these two silver things are meant to go on the nose cone and act as windows. Uh, I do recommend wash your hands before you do this. It'll help minimize the fingerprints that get picked up. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one. And you may even want to take the nose off here to give you more flexibility. Uh, the idea here is to get this pretty much lined up in the middle along the edge. And then just bring this back. Now I'm not going to squish that down entirely yet. I'm going to put the other one on as well, and that way I still have room to shift these around if I need to. Right, I'm actually going to overlay that one just a little bit. Okay, and I can come back on this one. Help get it to come down as much as I can. Um, it's going to be really hard to do this without getting some little crinkling there. If you start out by keeping it kind of taut, you can get most of it there. This is just the problem of putting a flat decal onto a curved surface. Alright, that could be better. This one is one giant decal. And it's going to wrap around the body. This. Alright, so the big decal is going to go like this. Alright, so that the cutout there is going to go at the uh, shock cord anchor. Now I'm doing this really lightly. I don't want to press down yet because uh, it'll take the color coloration off the body tube if you lift this back up. Put the nose back on there. All right. What I want, I'm trying to do is align that right with the edge of the body tube there. All right, and then that should overlap. So now that I've got that down, pull that a little taut. All right, and just carefully lay this down and get the bubbles out all the way around it. All right, and then that can come in like that. There we go, a little bubble there. I'm just going to smooth this out as best I can. Got a little crinkle there. I hate crinkles. Okay. Alright. Um, the Estes decal here. There we go. Okay, so they show it on here. I'm either at an angle. I'm going to put mine 
like that. That's really up to you. Okay, and then we have the two Starship Octavius decals here, and these are going to go along the sides. Okay, so again, we want to start by just loosely attaching these, and you can put these pretty much wherever you want. Try and get them in a straight line here. So I'm using this uh, mount part here as kind of a guide. All right, so once you've got that on, go ahead and push the bubbles out of it. All right, and then I can do the same thing here on the other side. All right, so I'm trying to get it at about the same level. that I had the first one at. Try and keep it as straight as I can. Okay. It's up a little high though, I think it may be stuck already. Let me see if I can gently peel this up. Nope, it's pulling the blue, so it's just going to have to be where it is. And that's really the one of the main drawbacks of these pre-colored ones with the self-adhesive decals. is Pretty much as soon as you put them on, they're stuck there. All right. But that is my completed rocket. And again, the gluing is completely optional. But I hope you had fun putting this together. Um, without the glue, this whole thing went together in about 20 minutes. And so uh, have a great flight, a safe recovery, and please stay tuned for more of my videos.